Good morning and welcome to Plains Mennonite Church. Welcome to our online service. We're glad you can join us this morning and I pray that you will feel God's presence and the presence of this body of Christ together in spirit and love. This week we've continued making plans for celebrating the class of 2020 at Doc Mennonite Academy while not being able to have our normal in-person commencement. Junior senior banquet, senior recital, and many other events will not be done as they have in the past. This has been a time of deep disappointment for our school community, particularly for our seniors. We grieve with them and are working hard to find ways to redeem this time. I'm going to digress for a moment. Two weeks ago, I shared our baby goats with you, and I couldn't resist an update this morning. Our four baby goats are doing well. Here's an interesting fact about our goats. Immediately after birth, the mother goats are actually quite mean to the other mother's babies. They make sure the babies know who their real mother is. We watch the baby goats search for love and acceptance. And that comes from their mother and clearly not from other adult goats. It's also why the baby goats are attracted to Sharon and me. We show them love and acceptance. It's the same with each of us. We need to find stability, to be chosen, and to find love, particularly when we're facing difficulties. And our service today will remind us of where we can find the most stable and unfailing love. God never promised that we would not have to go through difficult times if we follow him. He doesn't make the road easier for the Christian. He doesn't remove the obstacles. But God has promised to walk with us every step of the journey. He has promised the Holy Spirit to be with us through every difficult situation. Last week in our service, you heard our doc touring choir sing the song, I Believe. And in that song, we were reminded that God is there even when God is silent. Even when we feel alone on the journey, God is there. God is present. In our sadness, God is there. In our grief, God is present. In our pandemic, God redeems and invites us to see the beauty around us, to see God's redemptive work. We watch for signs of God's presence when God feels silent. We feel God's love and comfort in both our sorrow and joy. God's love and acceptance for you and me never wavers. And I pray that you will feel God's presence and love through our service this morning. Join me in the call to worship. God of all peoples, this morning we come to join with all creation in praising you. Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Welcoming God, we come to remember your guiding love that keeps us from stumbling. You listen and hear our prayers. Steadfast God, we come to worship you as a community of faith, grateful for your unfailing love. Oh, come and hear what God is doing for us. Praise be to God. Amen.
John 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will not no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Good morning, everyone. I'm here in Falshaw Craig Preserve. This is a beautiful place that I really like coming to with Joan because I really feel small here with all of these big rocks and huge trees. We're going to go see some. Before we get started today, I want to do a prayer together that I learned from the Mohawk people in upstate New York. It's spoken to greet each day, and I would like you to repeat it after me, okay? Let us put our minds together as one. Let us put our minds together as one. And send greetings and thanks to our Mother Earth. And send greetings and thanks to our Mother Earth, who sustains and gives us and gives our and gives our lives her many gifts, and sustains and gives our lives many gifts. Today I'm going to talk about something alive that is very small. Usually we see it when we take a walk in the woods. It is not a plant and it is not an animal, but it is alive. What is it? Need a hint? It usually lives on large rocks. Okay, let's get closer. Now do you see it? These are called lichens. I came here today because I think the natural world has many lessons to teach us. Especially during this time of no school, being stuck at home and wondering what the future will be like, and worst of all, having to wear a mask every time we go out in public. So what you see here is a, not a plant, but it's a living organism. It's not an animal but it is very much alive. Let's get closer. Do you think it will run and hide? Will it make a loud noise? It seems pretty peaceful. And it seems quiet. Now you may want be wondering, so what do these lichens teach us? First of all, what do you notice? Do you see the different colors? Are they all the same pattern? Differences in color and shape, texture, all make them beautiful, doesn't it? It's the same with people. If we all looked the same, the world would be a pretty boring place. Now here's the most important lesson that lichens teach us, especially right now. By the way they live and grow, lichens teach us the importance of connections and relationships. You see, lichens are actually two different organisms, a fungus and a very tiny algae colony. Neither can live without the other. The fungus takes minerals from the rocks and absorbs rainwater while the algae absorbs energy from the sun and converts it to a sugar which the fungus needs to thrive. The important thing that lichens teach us now, especially in this time of social distancing, is that we need each other. You know, 
before coronavirus, it was important for us to try to do things for ourselves. Well, now that we have to spend more time alone, we don't like it as much, do we? Human beings are like lichens. They need each other in relationship, and human beings need each other too. In Asia, lichens are called the ear of the stone. So the next time you go walking in the woods, listen and look for some lichens. See what they have to tell us. Good morning. We've had some requests to do a children's song during our videos on Sunday mornings. These are ones we usually do during the children's singing time. This morning we're going to do one, two, three, Jesus is alive. We're actually going to be able to see the animated part of it. And I'm going to do some of the signs that we learned for the song so that you can follow along at home. Ready? Let's go.
Well, good day. I'm here today with some very special people. My brother Galen and Teresa and their boys, Christopher and Noah. And Noah is going to light a fire and explain a little bit about um, this little fire uh, ritual that we're, we're going to experience this, this day. This is a powwow. Um, we do this at camp. Um, one rule we have at the powwow is that we can't talk about um, things that 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 were bad that happened in the days. So this is a like a campfire, and you all sit around the campfire then. Yep. Is that every night now? Do you do a powwow? Yeah. Every night. Yep. A powwow, and you can't have any... Can't say nothing bad. Can't say anything Has bad. all be positive. And do you talk about each other and about your day? You reflect on your day? Yeah. Do you talk about God? And while you're attending to the fire, Noah, um, I'm just uh, going to further introduce why I'm here uh, today in a little bit. But first I thought I would set sort of the background um, about uh, what we've been doing since Easter. This has been probably the strangest Easter season that we've ever experienced. And on Easter Sunday, we remembered the story of the empty tomb. And what was it that the angels told the Marys that came to the empty tomb looking for Jesus. They said, He's not here. He is not here. He's not here. The tomb was empty. And right now on Easter, in the few weeks before Easter and ever since, our church buildings have been empty, dark, lifeless, a little bit like a tomb. And so there were some more words that the angel said to the women who came to the tomb, they said, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. That's back home where they lived, where they raised their families, where they worked, where they went to the markets and shopped for food. And so ever since Easter, I've been using the scriptures to go out there in our Galilees because we're all at home right now and try to look for the risen Jesus, out in the ordinary walks of our lives, out uh, at home, where we are today. And so we've been using the themes of our scriptures ever since Easter to guide us in looking where Jesus could be found. Last week, we looked at the beginning of John 14, where Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is talking about his going away. Um, and he says, uh, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he talks about heaven and the mansions and uh, the many rooms and, and glory. And um, so we looked at that last week. And this week we continue on looking at John 14. And Jesus in, goes on and says, well, it, my hope for you to calm your anxious fears and all this talk of you know, Jesus leaving, it's not only in heaven, but I'm coming to be with you. And so Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the counselor that's going to come. And then Jesus says these um, fascinating words. He says, I will not leave you orphaned. I won't leave you alone, uh, but I am coming to you. And I, I thought about that, that God really is like an adoptive parent. God has adopted us, chosen us, and loves us. And so that's why I'm here this week with these special people and this special family to talk about their experience with adoption. A noble and holy calling. In fact, as I went through our church directory at Plains, more than 10 families of our congregation have experienced adoption. And uh, it, it requires remarkable strength and faith and trust in God, uh, like any 
uh, parenting calling. But Jesus uses this profound, holy analogy to talk about God and God's relationship with, with us. And so I thought it would be helpful to get some insights into adoption by just asking Galen and Teresa to tell us a little bit of their journey with adoption. How did you get started? What uh, propelled you in this direction? And, and what has your experience been? Yeah, well, it's been like a lifetime uh, of events there that led up to us adopting there. Um, you could say early in our marriage there with our first child, um, she was born premature and lived only a short uh, time for one month. And her life impacted probably Teresa and I the most um, in that one month. Um, just really uh, set our, our sights on on having, losing a loved one and having a loved one in and, and, heaven certainly brings uh, heaven a lot more closer so um, yeah Teresa delivered early and uh, her uh, pregnancies um, were difficult there we had uh, three other biological children after that that uh, we were blessed uh, by having and Teresa had to go on bed rest with each one of them and uh, so they were difficult pregnancies, and uh, the doctors at her last pregnancy strongly recommended that no more kids, you know, that for the sake of her and uh, the baby, you know. And so we, we uh, followed their advice there, and uh, and as time went through there, our kids were, it was a close family, we had a small house, and uh, we did a little um, ministry just with, wasn't even um, uh, throughout the years, um, thought as, as any kind of mission, mm -hmm. but we would go to the Satterton home, we would play games uh, with the elderly people mm -hmm. there, as a family, yeah. and uh, yeah. did things um, like that through through the kids uh, growing up, and uh, when we outgrew our house, we had one small bathroom, we came to this place here, which felt like a, a mansion at the time there, and uh, and so from there, you know, it's like I remember distinctly saying, wow, we could fill this place with kids, you know. Yeah. That was probably the, the, the first thought of it there, uh -huh. that of, of adoption. And, uh, yeah, we did have some friends that had uh, been pursuing that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we went by the route of uh, Foster to Adopt through Montgomery County. Okay. And uh, we uh, got our first uh, three cases, I think, the child came and and left mm -hmm. and then Noah came to our home as a newborn and uh, it was two and a half years later that we made his adoption complete huh. and it was uh, a very very rough and up and down roller coaster of events there right and we would pretty much said we would never do that again huh. and uh, but you know when you say never say never um, a year later we're doing it again and that's when Christopher came into our home as a newborn, and um, we ended up adopting him. Hmm. Well, they say uh, <clears throat> if you want to make God smile, make a plan. Yeah, and, well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, our, our plans sometimes take, take different, uh, take, yeah. different routes and yeah. diversions based yeah. on yeah. God's calling. So I know, yeah. I mean, Parenting brings with it all sorts of challenges, and I'm sure adoption does as well, but what have been some of the joys for you over the years and uh, the highlights along the way? Well, um, just the joys are just uh, um, being with, with kids there. I, I mean, that's, that's one of my areas in my life that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, from little on up, um, Seems like when they get out of high school, you know, then they get a little smarter than you. So I can. Uh, <laughs> so it's nice to to have younger children. Nice to have, I, I do engage well, on your level. I do. That? I do <laughs> well with younger children there, and just teaching Sunday school and in, in, in that line of uh, thinking there. Um, but no, that has always been um, uh, easy for me to, you know, and just having them around parenting is was uh, was a strong point. Yeah, good. You know, I. Um, <clears throat> came across a story this week when I was preparing for this about an older boy that was in foster care, uh, probably uh, late teens, and uh, in telling the story, um, 
this person said he was always around people, but he was always alone. Um, and it spoke to the fact that, and, and he just wanted an adoptive family to be part of because he wanted that, that level of commitment, that foundation of support, because while he was around loving people in foster homes, he knew it was temporary and it wouldn't last and it didn't have that long-term stability that we all need to thrive. And um, it was almost as well a telling sort of insight into some of our lives right now where we feel a little cut off from, <laughs> from our families, um, from our parents, um, and, and some from their children. And uh, while we're around other people, it still feels a little lonely uh, ourselves. And so maybe we can get a, a little glimpse into what it's like to be <clears throat> a foster child even in our isolation right now. But, um, you know, the really profound good news of the gospel is that God gives us that stable foundation, that he chooses us to be part of this new family, and that's a relationship then that doesn't end. It, it's this long-term, stable family unit that you're providing for Noah and Christopher here in uh, your home. Teresa, what have been some of your joys and um, reflections on this experience of adoption? There's been a lot of joys, lots of struggles, but there, there are many, many joys. And I, I think I go back to when we first even started doing foster, foster to adopt. Um, Brandon, Elise, and Olivia would have been like eight, nine, and eleven. At that, at that time, and when we adopted Noah and then Christopher, you know, a lot of different, you know, people would comment about, like, the big age gap and, and all that, and that was something we were very aware of, obviously, but just very, very intentional. We did not want to have, like, two separate families, the older kids, the younger ones, and I think because of our intentionality in keeping our family close and... Um, even through all the struggles, it's like I, again, like you made the comment about to make God smile or something, say, you know, we're going to plan this, 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 and it didn't work out all that way, but it's like I see how Noah and Christopher and our other ch children that we had in our home changed all of our lives for the good, mm -hmm. the good part. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of neat there with... Um with the younger kids and the older kids, it's like the younger kids have no biological, I mean, uh, anything that resembles me or Teresa or any of our kids, but yet how similar their actions are. Um, I mean, sometimes the way Christopher talks, it sounds like Brandon, you know, yeah. the old, my older son, Brandon, and uh, just... Uh, well, it's a perfect analogy for uh, what being a Christian is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Biologically, well, related to Jesus necessarily, yeah. but we are to reflect that image um, in our, our actions and Absolutely. attitudes, those practices. Um, and, and it does, your influence um, is profoundly shaping the lives of these boys in ways you, we, nobody can yeah. quite name or figure out. Uh, it is a, a profound gift. And um, in fact, uh, one of the, um, you know, this, the words that are used for the Holy Spirit here um, almost sound like legal words. Um, an advocate or a counselor, the helper is come, the comforter, the one who walks with us, beside us. That's the, the role of the Holy Spirit. And, and it reminded me um, of those profound experiences in the courtroom. Um, once upon a a long time ago, seven, nine years ago, when you invited family to join you for that moment of adoption. And I, I have actually a picture, Christopher, if you and Noah wanna come, I, I wanna show you a picture um, because this is a picture of really strong emotion um, where I was blessed to be in a courtroom. You probably had a lawyer working with you, an advocate, somebody who was helping you um, through that adoption process, and that's sort of analogy for God. Christopher, I have a picture here that maybe you you may not remember this, 
Remember that? Did you ever see that picture? Do you know when that was taken? May 21, 2013. Now that's just like next week. It'll be seven years when the judge said in a very powerful and emotional kind of statement, you are now a member of the Durstein family. You're High now five. a Durstein. And, and Noah, I have, I have one for you. You can have that picture. And Noah, I have a picture here for you. Do, do, you, do you ever see this picture? I bet you know everybody on that picture. You, you don't remember that, do you? Do you know when that was? Was that the museum? That was, that was at the courthouse in Norristown. What? On July 27, 2011, right? July 27, 2011, when the judge said, Noah, you are now a member of the Durstein family. That was a pretty holy and special moment. I, it brought me to tears when he said that. It was so powerful and profound. You can have that picture for your scrapbook. That has your whole family on there. Including, you for you? including you your grandparents. That? And what do you boys like about being a Durstein, now that you're Durstein? What do you like to do besides build campfires? What are your hobbies? What are the things you enjoy doing outside? Soccer. Soccer. Um, something else you like doing with your uncle? Baseball. Baseball. Everything's a competition with boys. Yeah. There. Everything's a competition. So and what are you, what are you gonna what are you gonna do with Uncle Mike? Race. Race. You like to run? And I I, I know I lost terribly last time because I didn't have my fast shoes on. So I I brought my fast shoes along this time. I'm gonna have to change first before we have our race. And Noah, what what do you like? You, you were just showing me a bucket of something over there that you like to use. I like to go fishing. Yeah. And you had a pretty special catch of fish over the weekend, didn't you? And uh, a good a good eating trout, huh? Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. That is Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. That is just awesome. Well, you know, this has been good. I, you know, you, you have probably the most wonderful parents in the world. And, and, but do they give you everything you want all the time? Of course they don't. But you know what? God doesn't give me everything I ask either. I, all my prayers, you know, some of them don't get answered in the way that I want them to be answered. But that doesn't stop God from loving me. And that doesn't stop your parents from loving you. And, and the good news of, of this gospel story is that God has chosen us. There's a, there's a great verse in John 15 where Jesus says, I did not choose you. Uh, no, you did not choose me. I chose you. So we're chosen. We're loved. We're adopted into God's family. And that truly is the mm -hmm. best news of all. Well, before we leave here, Mike, can I give a shout out to mom and dad? Sure. All right. Hi, mom and dad. I'm kind of like the 53-year-old uh, in the church choir there, uh, uh, waving to his mom and dad. You can be proud of that. <laughs> and you can join our choir if you'd like sometimes. Well, you know, if you need another, uh, you know, scratchy voice, maybe. <laughs> Do you, uh, I have a question, Mike, there. Do you know what uh, uh, mom and dad gave me that they did not give you, Phil, or Arnold? Wendell just kind of came along there. Well, I know they gave you far more things than they ever gave me. Um, so, I don't know what. Well, it was Claire's name. I got- You got dad's name? I got dad's name, Galen Claire. And so, um, always been proud of that there. Even though, out of all the boys, I'm probably more like my mom uh, than my dad. But uh, he did give me my, uh, my his name there. And uh, uh, for me there at, uh, well, I can just see him right now there saying, what are they talking about me for? 
and uh, he never wanted the limelight. Never wanted know? the limelight. It's all, it, and and he'd be the also the first to probably point us to our heavenly Father, and uh, I think that's where we're going with this whole adoption thing. There, that you know, no matter what family we come from, uh, the makes and and uh, the makeup of the family, um, God's family is far better. And uh, thanks to mom and dad there for pointing us. Uh, uh, in the right direction, and um, I just appreciate uh, all that they've done as well there. I would just like to offer prayer for you, if I could, uh, as we close. Sure. God, we give you thanks for Galen and Teresa and for their holy calling to serve as adoptive parents to Noah and Christopher. Thank you for blessing Noah and Christopher through Galen and Teresa's ministry of compassion and kindness and stability and support and love. And we just pray for all adoptive families that you would walk with them in that journey, uh, the highs and the lows, um, during times of discouragement. Be their comforter, their advocate by their side, as you have promised to all of us. And we thank you for that holy promise to all of us that you will walk with us and be uh, our um, shade at our right hand. And we ask your continued protection and a blessing for Teresa and for Galen as they continue this journey. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. with me in prayer. Oh God, at the beginning of this day, we join our spirits and our hearts and our souls with all creation in praise and worship for the gift of life, the blessing of creation, for sound mind and body, 
We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of the sunrise at the beginning of this day. We give you thanks. And as the sun rises over our part of the world, we trust you once again, O oh God, all over to hold the chaos and the sickness of our world in your strong and tender arms. During this season of change and extreme disruption to our lives and the people across our planet, we cry out to you, O oh God, to bind up the broken, bring healing to the sick, walk closely beside the lonely and the distressed, and comfort the orphan, the alien, the widows and widowers, and all who feel acutely alone and deprived of physical human touch. O oh God, we lift up to you the leaders of our nation and world, the politicians of all parties, asking for a new spirit of cooperation and understanding and a willingness to work together for the common good of the common humanity that we all share. We ask, O oh God, for a special concern for the most vulnerable in our communities. And as many of us and others around us grow more restless with our confinement, and some seek to be more daring and social than others. We pray, Lord, that you would fill us all with an extra measure of humility and understanding as we walk with and at times reason with those who see from another point of view. We pray this day, O oh Lord, for all those in harm's way of this dreaded virus, for those who get up early today to go to work as healthcare workers in hospitals. We pray for those serving in skilled nursing facilities and healthcare centers and memory units, from doctors to certified nurses assistants, to food service assistants, delivering meals. We pray for those serving in drive-through testing clinics and grocery store clerks and pharmacists and custodians and those working in the meat packing and food industry, often anxiously serving shoulder to shoulder with many others simply to provide basic food and shelter for the needs of their families. And still, O oh God, we lift up to you the needs of the unemployed, those worried about their own future sources of income and mounting bills and decisions around housing. O oh God, we are filled with special gratitude for your church, our congregation, for the faithful, seasoned, servants and the generosity of those among us serving in countless ways making face masks and sharing generously of their time and of their talents their gifts of money to the needs in our community those who prepare meals and give out food or just put smiles on our faces with their notes and words of encouragement bless our members today whether at home, whether going to work, wherever they find their service to you and your kingdom. O oh Lord, we now lay the heaviness of this new season and the problems of our world at your throne. And all the many swirling thoughts of our minds we lay down at the beginning of this new day. We confess at times our failure to trust in your goodness and in your grace and we pray just now that you would send us your Holy Spirit to comfort us, for we need in our world your holy help, your advocacy, your spirit of truth. Remind us again this day of the words of Jesus that you have chosen us, each one of us. You've adopted us, each one of us, into your family as daughters and sons and your love for us will never, ever let us go. Open our eyes this day, O oh God, to the beauty that sustains us, to images of hope, and walk with us now, O oh God, in the newness of this day and this week. Send us forth to find new ways of doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with you. In the name of our risen Jesus, the one who walks with us as our comforter, comforter, we pray, amen. 
Well, I trust you've been blessed by being together this morning. May God continue to walk with you and be present with you this week. Notice God's presence and signs of redemption around you. Join me in prayer. Lord, we rejoice in your steadfast love for each of us. You have sought us out and accepted us as your own. You have promised to be with us and never leave us. Your love never falters or changes. We rest in your arms of love this week and go forth with the confidence of your steadfast love. And now from Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.